Welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a riddle, so I'm going to just get straight to it. So now I'm just going to rotate the screen. Boy, I'm just going to... So this channel is from the bright side, and you should definitely subscribe to this awesome channel. And I have not done this riddle before. And I'm going to do it right now. So I just paused it, and now I'm just going to... Um, start doing a riddle and just, just start a riddle, but I'm just a bit, just doing something at the moment. And now I'm going to play. I like that song so much. Six riddles invented for... Born problem solvers. Let me just put in big screen. The best riddles are those that take an everyday object or idea. I couldn't read all the rest. Bright side bring these six amusing riddles that were challenged or solved. I can read, but I'm just a bit lazy. <laughs> so get comfortable, concentrate. And get cracking. Free rooms. You are stuck in the middle of a room of a free room house. The middle room you are in only has um the rooms on either side have doors to exit the house. The room on the left has two assassins who are ready to kill you the moment you enter their room. Um, the room on the right is fitted with solar-powered UV laser guns that will kill you on sight. How will you escape? Well, the solar-powered lights, of course. What will you choose? Well, not until you're at the moment, but what would you choose? I won't choose that. I'm going to choose this. Go out through the exit of the room on your right. At night, since the UV laser is solar powered, they will not work. So that one, I'm um, on the right side of the right. Fire in the forest. Two friends, James and Michael, are hiking in a very hiking in a very dry forest. Are we on the other side of the trail? Is, is a huge mountain that is impossible to. To scale to escape. The wind is blowing to the for forest fire towards them and they think that the fire will reach them in the day. Michael assures James that they are not going to die and that he brought a box of matchsticks, cakes and enough water to keep them alive for a day. What is Michael's escape plan? Um, Michael's escape plan is probably um, a wood fire probably some wood, some chopped wood, and some food. Forest fire requires wood, bushes, or grasses to spread. Using the matchsticks, the wind will blow the fire towards the cliff and burn all vegetation in the area. They can then take shelter in the burned down area. I think I got that wrong. Shot and survived. On a Friday, wait. On a Friday evening, Robert goes to watch a movie starring his favourite actor. Unfortunately, the movie turns out to be boring. <laughs> Disappointed, he goes to the bathroom and finding the bathroom empty. He shoots the bullet using his revolver between his eyes. Why would you just kill yourself over in a movie? It's so stupid. After five minutes, he comes out of the washroom and goes home alive. Oh, foot, he died. How did he survive the bullet shot? It's because it went into his um, mirror reflection properly. 
went to it went into his reflection in the mirror. It has to be the reflection in the mirror. Has to has to answer his reflection in the mirror. Robert shot between the eyes of his own reflection that he saw in the mirror in the bathroom. Yep, I was right. And he broke the mirror, but you're gonna get to renew the bad luck. I think that's just uh, little superstition stuff. Reading in the darkness. James and his wife Maria were sitting in their lounge room. Or James was watching TV, Maria was reading. At 11 p.m., there was a power outrage. So, James went to bed, but Maria kept reading. With no light in the room, how could Maria keep reading? Um, because, um, there was a lamp on. The TV was on, actually. Maria is able to read in darkness because she's blind and she's reading in bra- braille or whatever. Rally, I mean. I don't know that word. Man in black. Pff, that looks corny. A man with tan skin, black hair. Oh, a car with its headlamp switched. Off moving along this road. Oh, I wasn't saying that he was lame. I was saying that the person on the screen, like, that person looked lame. I just looks looks like a brick, you know. He's not lame though. A man with tanned skin, black hair, and black clothes was standing on a road with no street lights. A car with its headlamp switched off, moving along this road, comes to a screeching halt. Seconds before running him over. With no street lights and the headlamp switched off. How did the driver of the car see the man? Um, Because probably the car detected him standing. And he had his headlights on. So, yeah. He had his headlights on. Answer. The driver could see the man because it was daytime and not night. Yeah, well, that looks pretty obvious. Trapped inside a building. <laughs> Donald wakes up and finds himself trapped. Trapped himself inside a room that has four exit doors. <laughs> The room has a mattress for a Donald to sleep on. Some food, a water dispenser, wait, what? The room has a mattress for Donald to sleep on. Some food and a water dispenser. Ah! And a water bottle so that he does not die of hunger or thirst. Here's all of his utilities. Is Don... As Donald approaches the door to get out, he hears an, an announcement that warns him of what lies behind each of the four doors. Behind the first door is a 50 metre room filled with poisonous gas. Behind the second is a bomb that will de... Wait. Ha! Will detonate as soon as the door opens. Just going to take those sticky notes off. Can't see nothing. Behind the third 
And the fourth doors are venomous snakes and hungry sharks, respectively. Um, I'll probably go to the room with the poisonous gas. Which doors should Donald choose and why? You should choose the poisonous gas because first the bomb will just like blow up and um, the third door will just bite you and stuff. Donald can escape using the first door through the room filled with poisonous gas. Yay, I'm right and I didn't even watch this before. He must empty the water dispenser and put his face and put it over his face so that no air can enter or leave through it. He can then safely breathe the the air inside the water dispenser and and run across the room filled with poisonous gas. Which did you find the trickiest? How many could you solve? Comment. Um. Um. Okay, listen up. Six riddles you have to solve to stay alive. Unfortunately, only a few of us know exactly what to do in life-threatening situations. And that's a bummer, because knowing how to react if your parachute doesn't open, or a big ferocious dog is about to attack you, may save your life one day. That's why we decided to check your instincts and survival skills. I'm going to do three riddles. Short test to see whether you would stay alive in some dangerous situations. Let's just hope you'll never face them in real life. Here's question oh, number one. Face them in real life. <laughs> Here's question number one. There's a big brown bear just ahead of you. What do you do? One. What kind of question is that? I'd run for my life and scream for help, of course. Two. I'd try to befriend it. Maybe showing that I'm not a danger will convince it not to kill me. Three. I'd play dead and hope it doesn't notice me. Four. I'd shoot it. I ain't messing around. Uh, no, yeah, probably one. I'll choose this one. Have you already picked the right one? Yep. Well, time's up. Right that one. Let's see how you did. The answer? You definitely wouldn't be able to run fast enough, even if you're a competitive sprinter. A running brown bear can reach speeds of 21 miles per hour. Even the fastest man on earth, Usain Bolt, clocks out at 23 miles per hour, which I guess means only he would choose this answer. Now, shooting it also isn't an option, just a last resort. And you better plan on having a powerful gun and good aim. Otherwise, you'll just make the animal even madder. Sorry, hopeful bear whisperer, but talking to this animal and trying to get chummy with it won't do a thing. Do I really need to explain? It's a wild animal. It's going to feel threatened no matter what you do. It doesn't understand anything. Okay, I think that's enough reasoning. So, if you decided to play dead, yep. congratulations. That's the one I chose. You most likely stay alive. Just remember oh, to pull up and put your hands behind your head. 
This way, the bear won't see you as a threat. By the way, if you said smear honey all over the guy next to you and run like hell, well, we have to admire your creativity at least, but you're not much of a friend. Question two. You're outside during a tornado and there's no shelter inside. What's your course of action? One, I'd get in my car and drive as far away as possible. Two, I'd crouch down in a nearby ditch. Three, I'd climb a tree and wrap my arms around the branch. No. Four, a tornado, I'd be frozen with fear, standing there mouth ajar. Your 15 seconds start now. Um, Think carefully. And sorry, folks, that's all the time you have. Probably that one. I'm not sure. Because, like, if you drive far with your car, like, won't it, like, sweep you off? I, I'm not sure. And it'll just sweep me off. I'm just going to do that. The answer. The right thing to do in this situation would actually be to find a stretch oh! of open country. Oh, I didn't know that. In the nearest ditch, if you can find one, and cover your head with your clothes. That swirling I actually got it right. will pick you out of a tree with no effort at all. Believe me, you're not strong enough to hang on to that branch. And getting into your car is a no-no, too. Tornadoes yep. throw debris everywhere. So the likelihood that your tornado escaping getaway will be on smooth open road is slim to none. So how did you do? Tell us in the comment section below. Moving on to the next question. <coughs> question three. Remember that big, ferocious dog I mentioned earlier? Well, it's standing right in front of you, eyes locked on yours. What would you do? Number one, I'd scare it away with loud noises and arm flailing. Make mm. myself look bigger and scarier, you know? Number two, I'd stay still, arms pinned to my sides, probably out of fear. Three, screw this, I'm bolting out of there. I might not be able to outrun Smokey the Bear, but little Scooby-Doo here would be nothing. Number four, I'd scream for help at the top of my lungs. And 15 seconds on the clock. What, in your opinion, is the right thing I'll, to do? I'll stay still. Or do you choose? I'll stay still, but what would you choose? Okay, let's find out what the answer is. The answer. I know it's easier said than done. But the main thing here is to stay cool, calm, and collected. And don't wet your pants. If you try to run away, scream, or make any sudden movements, the dog will attack you instantly. And yes, they're fast too. So you don't want to take it off anymore. Just stand still with your hands pinned to your sides and do not move. Yep, also, I'll ride as in. much as you probably want to monitor this animal's every move, avoid eye contact. This way, there's a chance that everything will turn out in your favor. Question four. You're swimming in the sea and suddenly realize there's a shark coming right at you. What's the plan? Number one, play dead. If it works for bears, it probably works for sharks too. Number two, I'd beeline for the shore and pray that I swim faster than it does. Number three, I'd stare it right in the eye and punch it in the nose if I have to. What can I say? I'm the ultimate badass. Number four, I'd get around to its back and hang on to its fin. It can't get me if I'm piggybacking it. Mm. Now, that's a hardcore situation, isn't it? Here's your 15 seconds. Probably, mm, I'll choose so the second one. Choices. I'll choose the second one for sure. I'm just going to choose that choice. Okay, that's enough. Time's up. Let's see if you were right. The answer. If your badassery would give Clint Eastwood a run for his money, then congrats. Staring at the shark and punching it in the nose is the right way to go here. When a shark of swimming faster have now officially been killed. Sorry. Yep. Are you backing a shark? Really? Trust me, you're not fast enough to get behind it. And you definitely won't be able to keep a grip on its dorsal fin. These things are fast, seriously. And finally, save your acting skills for the bears. A shark won't miss out on a delicious meal, even if it's not moving. So, did you pick the right answer? If not, don't worry. 
we have two more questions for you to redeem yourself. Question five. What should you do if you're skydiving from a plane, you're falling to the ground, you pull your parachute ripcord, and it doesn't open? Number one, I guess I just try to find the softest place to land, if you know what I mean. Hmm, what else can you do? Number two, I curl up to protect my head and torso. This would probably <sighs> a little bit. Number three, I'd use the reserve parachute, of course. Four, I'd try to cling on to a fellow skydiver. Holy Star Trek, you're a Klingon. I guess I'll just go to find the, the softest Time place to land. I'll yeah. kill up to the table. Just accept your fate and meet your maker. Yeah, I'll just try to cling on to a fellow skydiver, I guess. I'll just cling on like. Cling. All right, let's see what I haven't done skydiving do before. Skydiving nightmare. Well, I know what to do because it happened to me four times. Good for you. The other options are off the table. Yeah. Going from such a height even into the softest place and all curled up like a shrimp. In reality, I've had four parachute malfunctions, and using my reserve chute, I survived nearly all of them. Question six. You're stranded in the desert. What's it gonna be? One, I'd take off my clothes and try to save as much water as I can. No. Two, I would not stop walking until I find rescuers or a town or whatever is going to save me. No. Three, I dig out a pit house of some sort and wait for help. Four, I'd only walk at night and sleep in some sort of hiding place during the day. That sun is way too hot for me. Think it through. The clock's ticking down 15 seconds. Have you made up your mind? Three, two, one. Ugh. Time's up. Um. I don't have any idea. I don't want to do that one because it, like, it's inappropriate. But I'm going to do this one here. It's the most appropriate. The answer? The correct option is number four. So if you pick oh, it, I was right. you would most likely survive. Unlike all the others right. who made the wrong choices. You see, at night, the temperature in the desert is way lower than during the day. So um, trying to find the right path hello. for the night um, is the only way for you to survive a couple of days in this Wait, I'll show my face. No matter how much you try to save your Here's water, quick one. you'd still run out of it. Because in the heat of the desert, you'd feel constant thirst. Yeah, I was right. Walking without stopping will exhaust you faster than you think, and definitely wouldn't help, since you have no idea where you're going. Duh. And waiting for help without doing anything is pointless as well. No dugout would save you from the heat. So, are you a survivor or not? Don't um, jump, pardon the pun, to conclusions just yet. By the way, don't forget that you can also check your logic skills with our other test. See how much this? of a Sherlock you are and try to solve the hardest crimes. Anyway, where were we? Oh, right. We're about to put your survival skills to the test once again with a bonus yes. and super hard question that only the smartest ones can answer. You can also play too. Here it goes. Bonus question. Let me know in the tribe of some sort is about to kill you. <gasps> Later, <gasps> you say your final words. If you tell the truth, they'll burn you at the stake. Choose one. Lie, mm, let me know which one you choose. How can you outsmart the tribe and survive? You have 30 seconds to solve this one. If you tell the your truth, they'll burn you now. at the stake. If you lie, they'll, they'll shoot you. If you tell the truth, they'll burn you at the stake. If you lie, they'll shoot you. Oh my god. This is a hard one. I'll probably just ugh, choose that one. Uh, I don't know. Which one would you choose? A or B? Just let me know. I don't have no idea. I don't have any idea. Man, this one Hello, second really person. Alright, I, I do not know. I'm just, I'm just going to choose this one. Three, 
I don't have any idea. So, uh, are you completely lost? Yeah, I'm just completely lost. I'm just gonna shoot that. The answer, you should say that they will shoot you. Yep. This will confuse the tribe because it isn't true. Ha ha, I'm right. They should burn you alive, not shoot you. Nor God, I'm so lost. smart at freaking riddles. Well, Hello, I'm second person. But I guess I'm not bright enough to crack Oh, so cute. I should probably also get someone else to pack my parachute next time. So, how many of these questions did you get right? Um, Tell all of them. in the comment section below. Don't forget all to hit the them. like button and test all your friends and family by sharing this video. There are even more fun videos like this one on our channel. So, be sure to join us on the Bright Side of Life. Um... Um... Alright, the next one I'm going to be choosing, this is from the Bright Side. It's a really awesome riddle channel. And for the second person, I'll just do a face review because, um, hello, um, second person. This is just my face and now I'm just going to, oh, why is it showing a, a Mac is that? I don't want to do that. Um, these are just riddles. Um, you're such a cutie. Can you show your outfit? No. Sorry, but I can't do that. Will she die? See if you can crack these eight tricky riddles in 30 seconds. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, so hard, so hard, so hard. You see the last riddle? Um, hi. Oh, God. What's missing in this photo? Wait, stop! What's missing in this photo? What's missing in this photo? Can you find what's missing in this photo? Just look carefully. The chairs are missing? The chairs or... The chair's missing. I can see the chair. Oh, no, it's not missing. The chair's missing? Ow, my... Ow. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I don't even know what that is. A man shoots his wife, then he puts her under water, and after all of it, he hangs her, and then they go out for dinner. How is this possible? It's because, um, hello, third person, I'll do a quick face review. Now, that's a quick face, face thing. Um, because I know that you want to see who I am, right? Um. Well, he doesn't shoot her, and instead he shoots the bushes instead. And if he did shoot her, they're just a, just a toy gun. Has to be. It has to be. Let me know what, what you think. <sighs> Do the hard. The man is a photographer. He shot a picture of his wife and processed it underwater and hung it to dry. Assuming that he is old school and doesn't like digital photography. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that at all. <sighs> a treasure hunter found a picture that is, so he's pointing in the direction towards the treasure. In which direction should he move? Um, um, probably it looks like move. How? Go right, go right, go right, go right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know this one. Go right. What do you think? Tell me your idea down below.
if you rotate the picture 180 degrees, you'll find out that it should go right. I mean left. Close. Use four lines to connect all nine dots without lifting up the pencil. Okay, so connect all nine dots. So, first we are going to be starting from here. Or you can just do it like... So you can just do it like, like this way is more easier. So you go like that, go like that, go like that, go like that. And then you've connected them all. I'll just see. <sighs> it goes for eight minutes. Eight minutes, oh man. I need to listen, I'll do a part two of this so I might like end this. Because I'm supposed to do my dishes. So I can't really pause it. Oh I was just about to do that. Cheat the system, think out of the box. Thank you for your lovely idea. These are three ways to solve this equ equation. By moving only one matchstick, you cannot break the matchstick and you cannot use... All right, let me just read this. There are three ways to solve this equation. By moving only one matchstick, you cannot break the match stick and you cannot use that well whatever that means so there are three ways to solve it so you can probably tilt oh to make like oh so you can probably so as you can see there's already like a hint so you can probably do that so just put that one and then put that one, and then this here, and that. So this, so that can go there. That can go. Oh, this is hard because it's missing something. The other way you can try is you can probably do that, and you can probably do that. So wait, oh. I'm jumping the gun. So wait. I can probably rotate it. Connect that on there. Well, this one connects to that one. And well, that goes up here. And that goes up here. And that is just missing something. Now, I don't really have another way to solve this. But um, let's see in the video. Option one, option two, option three. Are you kidding me? I thought you meant like build a whole entire thing. I was kind of right anyway. A ship sailing on the sea has a ladder reaching down in such a way that the bottom rung is just above the surface of the water. The rungs are each one foot apart. When the tide comes in, the water level increases at the rate of one. Many rungs of the ladders of the ladder would be underwater when the tide stops. So the rungs are probably that. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure the rung is. So it's probably pause it because I'm. I'm just gonna read this on the screen.
but to myself. You may tell me your idea. This one is just going to be a real one. So what I meant by the q and A, I'm going to do it today too, today or tomorrow. So much word. Yes, there is. Hello, third person. Hear the face reveal. Hi. This is just like a face reveal. Um, because, like, you want to know who I am. They're making you... Con they... It's... It's... It's tricky. Is that what you mean? It's tricky? And anyway, uh, the third person left. That's weird. So now I'm just going to quit showing my face because I really need to do the dishes in a minute. Mm, I'm just going to do this super, super, super fast and I'm just going to... Now I'm just going to go to this line. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. A ship on the sea, the ladder racing down in such a way that the bottom rung is a. Oh, is a. Is just above the surface of the water. The rung. Uh. Each. Each one foot apart. When the tide comes in. The water le level increases at the at the rate of one foot every hour and continues this way for four hours. How many rungs of the ladder would be underwater when the tide stops? When the tide stops rising. Yeah, you can tell me your answers um in the chat box. How many rungs of the ladder will be underwater? So how much rungs is there? Ratio box solution. Ship sailing on the sea. <laughs> All right. There's two rungs now, but the rungs that are underwater, so there's probably about... Play the video. You see, I think... Let me guess. Wait. All right. Let me know. So there's two rungs, but, like, I say, um, three feet. Three feet? You say three feet? Let us see you more. Why? God. Free. All right. You say free. I say like about like two are under the water. Cause I, cause I think you're pretty. I'm wrong. You're not wrong yet. Like this. 30 seconds. None. The ladder is attached to the ship and would be rising with the tide, so the bottom rung will just always stay above, just above the water. All right, so all of us are wrong. There is a 20k long bridge which can only support up to 2,000 kilos. A car weighing exactly 2,000 kilos starts slowly crossing the bridge and when the car gets halfway across of the bridge, a bird weighing 200 grams lands on top of it. Will the bridge collapse? Alright, so 200 grams, so that would be two. 2,200 grams, so it might just, like, crack a little. Let me know your little, little answers. But I think that might just, like, crack. I say no, but...
Well, I really like that, yeah. No, while well, travelling slow over half of the bridge, which is 10 kilometres, the car definitely would have used more than 200 grams of fuel. Therefore, the bird's weight will not have any impact on the total weight. All right, so you were right, and I was wrong. Well, apparently, like, um... If you can solve riddles, that means that you're an adult. Anyways, I'm only... Okay, I get it. By the way, I'm 16. So, I'm not that good at my riddles, but no one's not that good at their riddles. Only some people are. My mum's really good at her riddles. So, like, my mum's going to be teaching me how to solve more riddles and stuff. <laughs> Rob got separated from his brother when they were kids. Finally, Rob found his brother's home address. He knows his name, but doesn't know what he looks like. When he goes to the house, he finds a mechanic, a soccer player, and a police officer in there. Rob imme immediately recognises his brother. How did he identify him? So... When he goes to his house, he finds a mechanic, a soccer player, and a police officer in there. Um, I think they're probably just a mechanic because he doesn't seem to be smart. And he knows because it looks like him and he knows that he... Well, he probably likes mechanical stuff or police stuff. I think it's either a mechanic or a police officer. His brother is a cop. Police officers and soccer players have their name written on their uniforms. So, he was able to easily identify his brother. Okay, they were co-joined twins. They looked just alike. Oh. How many did you get? Well, I think I didn't get much. Here's my little channel. I wonder if I can see my own live stream on there. Go. My channel. Oh my. I can. I can. Live now. 63 subscribers. Someone unsubscribed to my channel. Before it said 64 subscribers. Here's the crazy profile picture. Here's the little Desi head on there. <laughs> Anyways, um, there's not going to be any Q&A um, because um, I need to do the dishes because I'm a little bit busy today. It's getting dark and just keep doing videos. I think you are very entertaining. Thank you for saying that. Anyways, this isn't fit on my lips. So I cut my lip because I was picking the skin off of there. So I kind of like cut it and it hurts. And now I have school holidays because my, I finished little, I finished this term. So now I'm, I'm just going to do basically lives every day. Well, unless if I go on a holiday. Well, because I'm actually from America, I might just go to Australia because Australia is very interesting. Hello, second person. By the way, there's not going to be any Q&A. And anyways, there's no Q&A because first I need to do the dishes. And I might do a Q&A today. But, um, yes, I might either do a Q&A today or tomorrow. So that's just a little guess thing. So I'm going to end this now. But the next room is going to be a Q&A. The title, um, instead of calling it Riddles 
and Q and A, I should have just called it riddles because like um there's no Q and A. Sorry, m my hair's all messy. But anyways, it's because I was running around and I was doing some running at little. I was running around around my house and I have a little trampoline to my backyard. Um, it's a very, very big trampoline, so, well, I have to go. See you next time. Okay, bye. I guess I'll just end it right now. Thank you for watching. And I'm just going to do my Q&A later. So, um, later or tomorrow or nothing can't be promised on when I'm going to do it. You will just have to find out. Because just in case I'm busy or just in case it's time for my dinner. Ho, ho, ho. Bye. End this big 